Today we're going to take a look at depth perception. Depth perception refers to our capacity to view the world in three dimensions. Our ability to perceive depth results from a variety of signals known as depth cues. And George Berkeley was one of the first people to talk about these depth cues and made a distinction between monocular depth cues, which implies that we receive input through just one eye, and binocular depth cues, which means that we receive input through both eyes. He noticed how even though an image may appear two-dimensional on the retina, certain features of that image let the retina know that the image is actually three-dimensional. So some common monocular cues that you may need to be familiar with are linear perspective, relative size, peripheral vision, and texture gradient. Perspective refers to the illusion that lines running parallel to each other come together and meet at a point far away from us. This monocular cue helps us judge how far two things are from one another. Another cue which allows us to judge distance is relative size, which simply means that things that are closer to us appear larger than things that are farther away. Now, when a person looks out of the corner of his eye, meaning that he engages his peripheral vision, lines that are normally parallel appear to be curved. And what this does is it gives you the, the feeling of being enclosed within a three-dimensional space, which contributes to your perception of its depth. Texture gradient was something first explained by J.J. Gibson and refers to our ability to perceive the details of an object's texture more easily when it's closer to us. The farther away an object is, the less clear its texture is. That means the harder it'll be for you to discern it. And based on how easily you can perceive the texture of an object, you can make an assessment of how far away that object is from you. Now, interposition is a monocular cue I didn't mention earlier, but it's a pretty simple concept, and you may also hear it referred to as overlap. And all it means is that if you see two objects, one placed on top of the other, or maybe you see one object in front of another in, at a distance from you, you'll know that the object that's underneath is farther away than the object that's closer to you. And again, it's simply a means of allowing you to judge distance. Now, the last monocular cue I want to mention before we go on is the motion parallax. Maybe you've noticed how when you're driving in your car, objects outside your window, like a field or a fence or the moon or whatever, they seem to be moving along with you. And even though these objects are stationary, they seem to have a speed of their own. And again, that speed varies depending on how far away the objects are from you. Now, binocular cues, if you remember, involve receiving input from both eyes. Uh, stereopsis is a commonly discussed binocular cue that allows us to perceive an image as being three-dimensional when we see it from different perspectives simultaneously. And stereopsis is the reason that we can watch a 3D movie, or uh, maybe you've had those books as a as a kid where if you look at it from a certain angle, uh, there seems to be a three-dimensional picture that comes out from the center. Another binocular cue I want to mention is accommodation. Imagine standing outside and squinting to see some kind of an animal in the distance. When you do this, there are muscles in your lens known as ciliary muscles that stretch and makes your lens get thinner. Uh, and when your lens gets thinner, your visual cortex picks up on these movements and these movements serve as an indication to your brain that whatever you're looking at contains some kind of depth. Now, even though we typically don't notice these cues in our everyday life, we take them for granted, we can see how artists, and particularly painters, are very attuned to them. So maybe to allow you to get a better sense of some of these cues, you can look at a landscape, a portrait of a landscape, and you'll notice how, again, objects in the distance are painted smaller than objects in front, which is an example of relative size. And you'll also notice how the artist makes use of overlap, which allows you to determine which objects are farther away and which ones are closer to you. So let's review some basic features of depth perception. Depth perception refers to our ability to interpret visual stimuli in three dimensions. And George Berkeley was one of the first people to write about this, and he described how our ability to do this results from a series of monocular and binocular cues. 
linear perspective gives us the illusion of parallel lines converging and relative size makes object cl objects closer to us appear larger than objects farther away. Our peripheral vision makes us feel enclosed in a space by creating the illusion that lines are curved around us. And texture gradients allow us to judge distance based on the clarity of an object's texture. And of course, overlap or interposition signals to the brain that an object placed underneath another object is farther away. And motion parallax refers to the way that objects seem to move along with us when we drive. And the speed at which they seem to move varies depending on our distance from them. The only two binocular cues we discussed were stereopsis and accommodation. And stereopsis is the effect that results when we view the same image from two different perspectives simultaneously, causing the image to take on a third dimension. And finally, accommodation refers to the way the muscles in our lens stretch when we squint to see something, which lets the visual cortex know that the object that we're looking at contains depth and is a certain distance away from us.